My, <laughs> my final guest tonight is by any standards a remarkable man. As cultural attaché to the court of St. James, he gained an international reputation for his quick wit and temperate behavior. Knighted by Gough Whitlam, he's become the symbol to the outside world of all that is enviable in the Australian way of life. I think the set's on fire. Ladies and gentlemen, Sir Les Patterson. all that stuff down your new... Oh, it is that a new suit? It's a brand new... <laughs> it's a brand new bag of fruit I've got on, Mike. It's very good to see you. I've got a new tailor. A new tailor, have you? Yeah. Do you uh, go to the same tailor all the time? Well, I have a little bloke up there in Kowloon, <laughs> which is a suburb of Hong Kong and I get about half a dozen a, a time, and he sends me a Christmas card once a year. That's nice, isn't it? Very, very nice indeed. And gives you a drink while he's making the suit. Yeah. Are they impressed by your figure? Well, of course, the first time I had this little bloke, a lovely little oriental fella, he was down on his knees with his mouth full of pins. <laughs> Looked like a shark. <laughs> and he ran the uh, tape up my inside leg. I'd like to do that later, Jackie. <laughs> uh, he said, what side do you dress? Dress, I think. What side do you dress? I said, I said no worries, just make it a bit baggy round the knees. That's what I said. <laughs> you with me? Are you, I must say this to you, Sir Les, although I don't much <laughs> like drawing attention to it, but you seem a bit tired and emotional tonight. Well, I suffer from permanent jet lag, Mike. <laughs> In my job, you know, I'm whizzing all over the place. Bazza, you'd have the same thing. And uh, I'm constantly having to do a lot of entertaining. I'm always dipping into my slush fund. <laughs> and uh, I have to entertain heads of state, you know, representing in so many fields, you know, the interests of my country, Australia, to which I drink this loyal toast. <laughs> I'm not tired, though. I'm very fresh, as a matter of fact. I've just been on stage in Baz's show. I'm not a welcome person there at all. He asked me to be in the show. And then he, you know, looks at me, you know, down his nose. What brings you back to Australia, Sir Les? My roots. <laughs> Your roots? I come back... Some people go overseas for their roots. <laughs> Bad clock. You know? <laughs> Up there in the Bali, all over the place. I come home for that. I do. I'm a very loyal Australian. And uh, I've got a family, a lovely family, and uh, they keep a pretty low profile. Lady Patterson. Lady Gwyneth, of course. Lady Gwen, yes, yes she is. Yes. Uh, How is she? Oh, she's a. <sighs> no, I haven't heard from her lately, but. Oh, she's a marvellous person. You know, she's tremendously loyal and. Uh, oh, a former model. What form of model? I don't know. A model for the monster from the Black Lagoon, I guess. <laughs> She's not watching, I might say. She gets the news, I mean, she gets the newspapers, but they're always censored, like the newspapers in prisoner, you know? Yes. They're like a doily when she gets them. <laughs> when you... Uh, will you be going to, to England in an official capacity for the royal wedding? Well, I think it's almost definitely on the cards. Uh, <laughs> I've asked for a pew near the door, in case I have to nip out on affairs of state, you understand, it's a long service. But uh, I will be going to St Paul's Abbey for this marvellous moment. I'm a Republican too, this is a... I'm a paradox, viewers. I am a Republican uh, in many ways, you know, I hold the Republican sympathies of a, uh, 
a socialist elder statesman and my colleague there and uh, co-religionist, I might say, Bassa Jones. We don't see eye to eye on everything, but I have to be bipartisan. I've learned to be bipartisan as I've become a senior figure. And I'm going to be reading one of the lessons, I think, one of the Gospels. <laughs> in the Abbey? In the Abbey, in St Paul's Abbey, and I... Uh, I'm translating one of them into Australian. I'm going to call it <laughs> the Ozspell, according to Les. I haven't worked out which one, perhaps the Sermon on the Mount or one of those nice things. I'll just render it into colloquial Australian. Mm -hmm. I see. think it should go down sensationally well. Very impressive, yeah. Well, what about while you're over there? Do you think that uh, you might get the beckoning finger now that Charles has knocked down the Governor-General's job? I mean, you're an obvious candidate. Well... I was wondering when you were going to throw that at me, Mike. It's still very stum, you know, to use the Red Sea pedestrian expression. But it's stum. It's under wraps. This mustn't go any further. Right, viewers? No further. But I'm expecting any moment to be offered the GG job. Not that I have any... Oh, Charlie would be nice, but I don't know whether it's the popular choice. I think if there was a... <laughs> If there was a referendum, are you with me? Are you with me? If there was a referendum, I think the Australian public would go for the image that I project of the, you know, the senior Australian diplomat who's no been worries. around the trap. No worries. No, you bazza. <laughs> Luck to you, bazza. <laughs> and what's, what's it... <laughs> What's it like being such a, a, a public figure? I mean, you obviously have to watch your behaviour in, in, in public. And, and well, I mean, you must. Now, what about the journalists, you see? How do you deal with them? So that's, journos. Journos. Well, they're difficult, you know. Sometimes they get you in the gun, you know. You might have had that experience. You know, you're a big, you're a big name. You're very, very good at your job. You're an ace, like. And as soon as they know that, you know, they start trying to pull the rug out from under you. No worries. We've had it in our respective fields, this little actress here. <laughs> but, um... <laughs> Sorry. Um... <laughs> no, well, it's sometimes stiff competition, you know. The, the press. And I have followed the policy of slinging the journos. Slinging the journos? Sling them. <laughs> or sugar bag them. It's an old expression. If you wanted to <clears throat> keep someone sweet, you'd leave a sugar bag of beer out in the back veranda. They'd nip around and get it. They'd be OK for a week or two. It's a policy in Australia. You'll find it yourself. You'll be practising it pretty soon. <laughs> but, of course, slinging the journos is sometimes a bit difficult when you're in the upper echelons of the political spectrum. You with me? Um, and I have found, as a consultant person in the arts, in the capacity of directing where the art subsidies go, which has been a big job of mine, I call, call upon, they say, look, Les, they say to me, pull yourself together, will you? <laughs> I'm not here to be sniggered at. <laughs> They say to me, Les, look, are we going to give a couple of thousand bucks to this gorilla basket weaver? Or, you know, the street puppet theatre, or what are we going to give it to? I mainly say, the journos, you see, you give the arts grants to the journos. Goff started it and it worked very, very well for him, no worries. Because bet your life, where there's a journo, right? You with me? In his bottom drawer, he's got a poem, hasn't he? Or a, a play, or a scenario. <laughs> He's got one of these things at the bottom drawer. Sling him an arts grant, you see? He'll be sweet for good. He'll be sweet for good. He'll vote for you. He'll put it in the paper. It's the new way, you know? It's the new form of sugar bagging. No. Wait. So that's... Uh, that's uh, <laughs> for the moment... Uh, no, we're not finished. We're going to come back after this break, but we have to... Break for refreshments. Break for refreshments. <laughs> I'll be in that, viewers. <laughs> we'll be back in just a moment. See you in a moment. Stay with us. Stay with us. Stay with us. Welcome back. My guests are Barry Jones, Jackie Weaver, and Celeste Patterson. Now, Celeste, I'd like to get this sort of a group. What's that, sir? Well, it's a little drink, actually. Oh, <laughs> I'd like to have a, a group discussion uh, here, if we could. Did, did you? <laughs> did you watch Pick a Box when uh, when it was on? 
That's where I've seen you before. Yeah. <laughs> Pick a box. I oh, cried. Hey, you didn't have a beard then, Baz, did no, that's you? Right, that's right. You would have been too young for that, Jackie. <laughs> yes, back in the old days of black and white TV, wasn't it? That's right. Yes, I thought your complexion had changed a bit too, Baz. <laughs> that was a great show, was you it? know. It was run by, you might say, the Bert and Patty Newton of their time, <laughs> Bob and Dolly. Tremendously popular. They were Yanks, but nice. He was. She was an Aussie, wasn't That's she, right, Dolly? Yeah. Beautiful head of hair she always had, too. Reminded me of Mike Walsh in that respect. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, oh, very nice. And still with us, I'm told, yes, too. You right. keep in touch with them, would you, Bass? Not, not very closely, but I get a Christmas card from time to time. Like my little <laughs> chink tailor. <laughs> about as often. Well, they did a lot for you. They put you on the map. They did mind you, of course. You put them on the map in many ways with your photographic memory. And, uh, I reckon, though, that you might have picked a pretty good box for that safe seat in Canberra right now. I reckon that was the best box old Bazzer ever picked, eh? There's a box I could pick right now, I'm telling you that. And that is, I don't know, there are so many boxes offered to me. The big prizes, the glittering prizes of political life. And you know, I'm inclined to shun them, you know. They're presented to me, these cubes, these mystery packages, and I think to myself, I'd prefer to just roll along the way I am. I'm chairman of the Australian Cheese Board. <laughs> I was sitting on the Cheese Board only this afternoon, as a matter of fact. <laughs> With a Tasmanian Stilton must have rubbed off. <laughs> Sitting on a cheese board is no easy task, I can tell you. Them flags dig into your bum. <laughs> Have you seen Jackie in many movies as well, Celeste? Oh, I mean, you... Jackie. I've seen her at the beginning of a lot of movies. In my capacity, of course, I have to go to a lot of the Aussie films. And uh, they're lovely. But uh, I find a bit of jet lag catches up with me after the first few minutes, Jackie. So if you're not on in the first reel, I tend to miss you. I doze off a bit. It's the only chance I get to have a cat nap, Mike. Yeah, right, of course. Yeah. What about, no, you, you, apart from being one of the best known faces in Australia, you're one of the most commercially exploitable. I wondered if you'd ever been offered a, a commercial. Well, I was on the cards for the American Express job. <laughs> But I might have been wearing the wrong suit that day. What was it? I don't know. Possibility of budget rent a car? It's in the pipeline. But generally speaking, I have to keep aloof. May I say this without wishing in any way to impugn the, you know, some of your enterprises, which have been uh, philanthropic, basically. Telling people they'd be happier with an American Express card. But, uh, I find I have to keep a bit aloof from the ads. I'm offered a lot of things, you know. I let John Gorton do most of them. <laughs> and Dame Zara, Bettina, they do most of them in the political spectrum. Hmm. But, you know, I get the offers. And I'm open to the offers. If you're ringing in, oh, I'm only too happy, you know. I'll do anything, more or less. So, uh, but the payment, of course, is the problem, Michael. The payment, you oh. see, you can't, again, you can't accept the money. I, I, the contra, I oh, mean to. Contra deal. That name like... mean anything to you? <laughs> <laughs> Good old contra. <laughs> you know, uh, wheels. Of course, I've got a Commonwealth car in perpetuity. This is provided for me all my life. You know, even the hearse will be provided in due course. <laughs> Let us hope some distance off. But... Uh, you know, I said a little, one of those little four-wheel drive Suzuki's for Lady Patterson might be very nice, you know. Yes. Just bear that in mind, sponsors. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, fine. Well, so Les, we're going to take a, a little break now. We're going to have a song. I know you like music. Song. A lover of music. Beautiful. You? Yeah, you like the arts. The arts, that's right, yes. And she's beautiful, she too. She is nice, isn't she? Oh. Yeah. yeah. Another, so, Les, would you keep quiet while I just read this introduction? <laughs> have a drink. <laughs> Well, that's about all we've got time for. My thanks then to the Watsons, in the mellow to, tone. to Jackie Weaver, to Barry Jones, and to, of course, Celeste oh, Patterson. Those Watsons, weren't they terrific? In the mellow tone. Very good indeed. I've got a big subsidy for that, Lee Sheila. <laughs> <laughs> I'll slip it to her later. <laughs> Viewers, I'm not a show pony. I'm not a show pony. I'm a stayer. I'm a survivor. You're a survivor. And old Baz is a survivor. <laughs> 
And I would like to prevail upon this channel to give me a couple of minutes because I've written a little poem for you. I'm not just talk, I'm putting, I, I can have the creative ability myself. <laughs> and I've written this poem. <laughs> and I'd like, if I may, to read it. Have I your permission, Mr. Producer? No worries. <laughs> <laughs> Could we have a bit of mood music in the background, son, eh? No worries? No worries. No worries. Ode to Parky by Celeste Patterson. <laughs> Cop this. <laughs> There's a bloke who's keenly watched and widely read, who always hits the nail on the head. In the UK he started his career, now he's hit the jackpot over here. If he gets nervous, well, it's never showed. His face is like a mile of rugged road. <laughs> his crow's feet are the dried up beds of smiles. And his best friends are aware that he's got piles. <laughs> piles, piles of charm. <laughs> Pizzazz, pizzazz, and British spunk and phlegm. <laughs> of TV interviewers, he's the gem. He can interview a Zulu or a Raki and make it interesting. His name is Parky. <laughs> this bloke can conjure laughter and applause in the wake of rat bags, poofs and crashing boards. <laughs> and if he's pushed for spicy dialogue, He'll ask you if you've ever nudged the grog. <laughs> the TV critics, the TV critics here are chippy guys. They'll try to chop old Parky down to size. A few might say, go back where you come from. We won't be taught charisma by a pom. <laughs> but he knows the average Aussie journalist is following orders, jealous, or half pissed. <laughs> <laughs> well, I keep saying they'll cut it, they won't cut it. He smiles, he does his job, he doesn't care. When you're the ace, where do you go from there? So, whether you be Hun, or Nip, or Darky, <laughs> raise your glass of lager, rum, or sake, and drink to my old cobber, dear old Pucky. <laughs> Good luck, Pucky. Great moment in my career, though. I'm not going to say anything else. You can't follow that. From all of us here, a very good night. Good night.